ever Eagle Tribune Thursday football show. We're here with big junior lineman Sean Nardiff of uh, Salem High School, coming off a terrific two-way performance versus uh, Nashua South in a, a shocking upset where the unranked Blue Devils stunned number three, Nashua South. Sean is our first ever lineman of the week. Sean, how'd you guys do it? Nobody in the world thought you could beat South. I mean, I think it all started with the offensive line. We were getting our double teams down. Boys were on the ball hard. Nice balance, and, and, and Coach was Coach Pike was raving about uh, your impact on both sides of the line. You had one and a half sacks, and you uh, anchored a line, 364 yards uh, total offense, I believe, and it was a pretty nice 50-50 split. Well, in this day of, of the spread offense, where everyone's trying to set passing records, how have you guys managed to uh, be so effective, uh, sort of getting that nice 50-50 split? Um, I don't know. We're more of a run first, I'd say. Just pound the ball, and if it open, if you see anything, we open it up, throw the ball. What's it like having a, a veteran signal caller back like uh, John Sartani? It's, it makes it a lot easier on the line. I mean, he's really, he's a really big help for us. Now, is there any uh, any jealousy, big guy? I'm hearing there was a certain hot shot freshman quarterback back in the day who maybe uh, outgrew the position. Nar, 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 <laughs> Nardif. No, no jealousy. Yeah, I was <laughs> freshman year. Ran the option. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, how big were you as a freshman? Uh, a little smaller than now, yeah. But did did you enjoy it when, when it you got fun. the news? Yeah, it was definitely fun. Did were you uh, were you were you bitter when they moved your position to line? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and how'd you deal with it? Is it just suck it up? You have yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. Or, uh, what's it been like? A uh, uh, terrific uh, local story with uh, with the Blue Devils two years ago. Maybe the worst year in school history. Yeah. You you were winless. It doesn't get much worse than that. Last year, make huge strides, sort of a middle of the pack club, and now still no one give you any respect. You beat number three uh, Nashua, Nashua South in the uh, uh, WMUR uh, union leader polls. What's it like to, to, to start getting some respect, to start being a real player on the It's definitely a big step for us, stepping it up from when we went 0-11 to now a big start. We needed the big one at the beginning. What role has uh, Coach Pike uh, played in, in, in that uh, turnaround now in his <clears> second year as head coach, one of the younger coaches in the state, but from a real uh, football coaching family, his father to a, a fine run at, yeah. at Haverhill High in Massachusetts? I mean, he's a really good coach. He's really helping us out. And we've got a good staff this year, and I think he's going to really help us out this year. It's been awfully, uh, awfully warm out there. Big guy like you. How big are you, Big John? Uh, six, one and a half. 235. So that's not, not a small kid. How do you go both ways and play so effectively? We had, we had some 170 pound uh, running back sort of uh, keeling over. How do you yeah. go both ways in that uh, sweltering uh, week one heat? We definitely get a lot of conditioning out here. I mean, we got all our Paris Island, Devil's Den that keeps us in shape. <laughs> Devil's Den, I like it. I think I like it. What the, give us a little background on the Devil's Den, said the uh. star Blue Devil <laughs> lineman. I mean, we go, we have five different stations. We all do about. Um, Two minutes at each station, go through, and get a good workout. Whatever you're doing, Sean, uh, keep it up. Uh, it's been a great, uh, great early start to the season. Congratulations to our first ever Lineman of the Week. Over is Kevin Chen, the first ever winner of the Eagle Tribune Thursday Football Show Player of the Week. Congratulations, Kevin. Uh, Kevin, could you just talk about your performance? Quite a performance 15 carries, 140 yards, two TDs, showing your two way player, eight tackles as well. Coach Perry was raving about your performance in the opener against Cambridge. Well, I really I owe it all to my offense. Uh, my offensive line, to be honest with you. I mean, they really pushed around. The defensive line, so I, I just had huge holes to run through. I mean, it just, they won the game for us, and the offensive line just beat them up, so. Good stuff. Hey, and uh, geez, Kevin, it was a, um, a, a big uh, big change for you. Uh, yeah. Previous years, you had uh, Jack Sylvester, a really yeah. talented running back, and you really had to pay your dues and, and wait. W were you confident you were going to be the guy this year, or, or could it have been another year where you really weren't going to get many touches? Well, I knew my time would come this year. I mean, I played behind Jack Jax Sylvester throughout my three years being here. I mean, he's a great player, so it's just great to learn from him, and he's, I, I owe it all to him right now. 
And uh, now, now, what did you do to get ready for the uh, for the big uh, senior year, Kevin? If, if you don't deliver this year, it's like mm -hmm. you're looking back, and geez, I really didn't have much of a, of a high school career. What would you do to make sure you were going to be in shape and, and ready to uh, earn the job and be an impact player like you have been? Well, during the uh, winter and spring seasons, I did track and fields. I ran the 55 meters and uh, the winter and the uh, 100 meters in the spring. So just make sure I get faster every day. And I know that doing track would get me in the weight room as well, just lift every day. And in the summer, I worked very hard, uh, went to the 7-on-7s, uh, seven seven, lifted every week and just just keep working hard and just stay humble, you know. Did, were you on a were you a man on a mission? Did you have to? Andover usually isn't lacking for talented football players. Did you know you're going to have to beat out some some tough competition? And did that motivate you, or did you figure it was your job and you, you weren't overly concerned? I was definitely worried, to be honest with you. Um, we have some great talent on this football team. Uh, I was really looking forward to playing safety this year, which I am. So I just really wanted to work very hard and. Uh, the running back spot, uh, you know, we had Brandon Marty, and I just wanted to work very hard and, you know, play alongside him. I, how about that? Sometimes you, you hear uh, he's a track guy, and, and it's almost like an insult for a football player. You, you combine both with the uh, blazing 11 4 0, 100 meter speed, and, and, and the football ability. Are you a track guy playing football or a football guy running track? I, I would say I'm a, fo a football guy playing track, well, a football guy doing track because. Uh, I started uh, playing football first in fifth grade, and freshman year I, I knew I was fast, so I just decided to, tra decided to do track to get faster. And uh, uh, you always been an Andover kid? Uh, yeah, pretty much. My whole life I've, I've been in Andover. Okay. And geez, rumor has it that the, the Chen family owns a restaurant. Um, might as well put a plug in. Uh, what, what, uh, where do we get the, uh, the, the best food in the... Uh, Merrimack Valley, Southern New Hampshire. Well, it's called Grand 38 in Pelham, New Hampshire. It's a Chinese food restaurant. Uh, make sure you go there. Do, do you ever work there, or is that uh, you, you let the other people do the real work uh, and you're just a football player? I work there on the very busy days, like New Year's Eve, Christmas Eve, all the really big days and holidays. Uh, uh, Kevin, you, you got a big game coming up with the arch rival North Andover. North Andoverites love to beat Andoverites. Mm. They love it. They love it. They love it. What are your thoughts and emotions going into that big, uh, big showdown uh, Friday? Well, North Andover has always been a huge game for us. I mean, they're our rivals. They're right on the border of Andover, and we know we can beat them after coming off a 48 to nothing loss. I mean, win. Sorry, and we know we have to work hard to beat them. We know they're talented. But I think we can outwork them and, and be more physical than them and beat them. Have you set any personal goals for, for yourself, Kevin? You're off to the uh, terrific start. Uh, what are the long-term goals for, for the season? Long-term goals are just help this football team win, help this football team win an NBC title, and help this football team win a state championship. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Best of luck to you. Uh, thank you. OK, so welcome to the inaugural episode of the Eagle Tribune Thursday football show. This is Mike Muldoon, I'm Dave Willis, and we are gonna take a look at some of the big games for this week and make a few picks. Starting with a couple 1-0 teams. It is Haverhill and Central Catholic, both coming off big wins. Central beating up on Lawrence pretty good. Mm -hmm. Haverhill barely getting past Beverly in a weather uh, stopped game, weather halted game. This is a big game. You know, it's only week two, but this is a big, big game. Yeah, it, it really is, Dave, because you know Central's good. They, they beat Xavier and they beat Everett. They got Marcus Edmonds back. They got Mike uh, Milano back. So, so they get the blue chippers. They, they get the legacy statement game, particularly for, for Haverhill. Do we belong with the big boys? Yeah, that's the biggest thing. They have to make a statement. We belong with the big boys. You know, can, you know, can we play with Central Catholic? Can we beat Central Catholic? Havel's a good team. Havel's a talented team. Is Brogan McGovern, can he take it as a sophomore, take it to that next level and beat, you know, play against the defense that, you know, has a lot of pieces back from the Super Bowl last year. Sammy Alzeeb, you know, coming off a huge game last week where he, you know, scored the winning touchdown in the, the weather-delayed game. It's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, the, they, they, they refer to the look test. And young Brogan McGovern, he passes the look test. It's like, 
who put John uh, John Elway's kid in in, uh, in the Shoe City. And another thing uh, about the the Hillies, those are some big big young men. Uh, they must just camp out in the weight room. Those are some massive kids. So I don't think they're going to back down physically. Uh, usually Central has a brawling tough guy uh, line, but those are some big kids on on. Uh, on Havel as well. Could be one in the trenches with some with some fierce battles with some real muscle-bound uh, young men. <laughs> Check out Brogan McGovern's uh, big touchdown run right now. <laughs> okay, but that being said, I still gotta go to Central Catholic. They're still the Super Bowl champions. Uh, you know, they still have a lot back. They still have Mike Milano back. I think Central, I mean, I think Haverhill's has a great team and they very well, they're my pick to win the league, but I think I gotta go with Central on this one. I think I gotta uh, agree with you, Dave. Uh, awfully tough to expect a, a sophomore quarterback in, in his second game to, to take on uh, Central Catholic and, and knock him off. Stranger things have happened, so it should be a great one, but uh, tough to go against the Raiders. Another great rivalry, right down the street. We got Andover, we got North Andover. They usually open against each other. It's North Andover's opener. Andover already opened up by beating up on uh, Cambridge Ridge and Latin. This is a game that's produced so many great finishes. You know, last year they went to overtime. A few years ago, the North Andover guy had the ball in his hands and it got knocked out at the last second. This is a really, you know, this could be another exciting game. On the surface, Andover seems like a big favorite. And I would still pick them, mm -hmm. but you know, North Andover's got good players too. It's North Andover's really been star-crossed. You you uh, you feel from a little bit. They're always right there. It's like, oh my gosh, I thought they had it. I thought they had it. Sometimes those breaks go away. Sometimes they don't. But it seems like they're 0 for seven years on, on getting a break. Maybe this is the year that they get that break, which every year seems to go Andover's way. We talked about Brogan McGovern. North Andover also has a sophomore quarterback. And also a good Irishman, I think, by the name of Seamus Lambert. So, wow. And I know the Seamus. The Lambert, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I don't know. But it's, he's Seamus, so I'm going to assume. And he's got Bubba Shkulu to throw to, so it's not like he's... Another good players. Irishman. Kill Bubba, <laughs> kill Shkulu. Yeah. Bubba, I think, is the most underrated player in the area. You were smart enough to pick him to your Eagle Tribune All-Star team last year. The kid just... Uh, Game after game, he's got six catches for 75 yards in a TD. He's like clockwork. I don't know if he's more Wes Welker or more explosive than that. That kid delivers. Should be a monster senior year, and, and he'll help any young quarterback. You talk about young Irish uh, quarterbacks, the sophomore E.J. Uh, Perry the fourth. Uh, he's uh, he's probably going to be a, a pretty good one based on uh, on last week. Uh, he's got the Perry magic, no question. Speaking of Bubba Shkulu, I'm going to feature him in this week's Eagle Tribune on Friday, so read that. And, yeah, but Andover, I got to go with Andover. They got EJ. They got Kevin Chen, who's featured in this. They've got all these different weapons. Alex Marshall, I got, I got to pick them. Yeah, you, you would think yeah, Andover. It looks like perhaps a, uh, a rebuilding year for, for North Andover in the uh, post-Walsh era. It was, what, 49 straight years of a Walsh at QB? Roughly 49. So. It feels like it, at least. Give or take. Another good game out in New Hampshire. Salem coming off their biggest victory in forever against Keene. Now, as good as week one went for Salem, it went that bad for Keene. They lost to Merrimack 35 to nothing. So, this is something we, not, we haven't gotten to say in a while. Salem's the favorite. Yeah. Of course, the interesting thing always about uh, Keene, it's always the, the road trip to, to hell. It's, you go 600 miles and then you're halfway way there or something like that. But we were lucky enough to be at the, uh, the practice uh, today at Salem. Love as a young coach, Rob Pike. Love his confidence, love his enthusiasm, love the way he treats the guys. They had a good young staff. We're talking to Sean Nardiff, uh, brawling uh, lineman. Looks like they're in the way of, I remember two years ago, winless. And now you're talking, Amazing. they just knocked off number three, uh, Nashua South. And what could go down is the upset of the year in the state. So can they keep it up or, or was it a fluke? One person likes the trip to Keene. That's Chuck Fry, the dearly departed. He's still alive. He just doesn't work for the Tribune anymore. Uh, speaking of uh, speaking of South, they have another tough game. Just looking at the rest of the schedule, they got Pinkerton, you know, which is the worst person. You just lost a tough game, Nashua South. That is. Now you got Pinkerton, who you know again looks great. They had a great opening week, so they're going to play. I'm going to go with Pinkerton in that one. Uh, staying local, Lawrence and Methuen. 
Uh, that one's a little bit of a yeah. question mark. Well, so I agree. I, I go with Pinkerton. We, we were right, both sorry. going with Salem over Keene, I assume. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Salem over Keene. Uh, Lawrence Methuen, I, I, I flipped, I flipped, I flipped, I flipped, and I think I'm going with the Lancers. Interesting. Uh, the Nelson Valerio factor. Yeah. And, I, you know, I wrote about him last week. The kid, the kid can throw. I'm going to say Methuen bounces back. It's a close one. Both teams are – both teams I feel like are better than they showed in week one. But I'm going to go with Methuen in that one. Um, North Reading and Ipswich. North Reading. Like the Hornets? Yeah. Or, Ipswich didn't look particularly good last time I saw them. Timberland, Londonderry. I, speaking of going with the Lancers, I'm going to go with uh, the Londonderry Lancers in that one. Yeah, I, I, I think you did. They, they looked good in week one. Yeah. Uh, switching over to Saturday, short slate. Georgetown at Greater Lawrence, Reggie's. Gotta go with the Reggie's, yep. Georgetown uh, rebuilding. Yep. Whittier hosting Bellingham, the game I'm going to be at. Um, Wildcats, Wildcats coming off a good win. Yeah, we're, we're making it boring. I, I agree with you. Where does Kevin Bradley come up with these teams? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. The craziest teams, God bless them. And finally, Wyndham against uh, hosting Trinity, Wyndham. I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going with, uh, I'm going with Trinity. I think it's, it's going to be a good one, but good. Uh, they had the crazy end of the season where Wyndham beat them real good late in the year, and then Trinity beat them real good. Was it in the, in the state finals? Uh, no, I think it was the state semifinals. State semis? Semifinals. Okay. So, uh, it's a good, it's, it is a good body rivalry. I, I, feel, I feel Wyndham. It's going to be tough. Uh, I, I hate to go against McGinnis, but I, I think I'm going with Trinity in this one. Okay. That's the slate for this week. We've got a few teams that are off, too. Go out and see you again.